Welcome to Iron Dinos, I'm Jason, and today I'm going to be chatting with Sean and Adam about Port Royale 3. Port Royale 3 is a business simulation with real-time battles set in 16th and 17th century Caribbean. It's available free until March 31st as part of Games with Gold. Have either of you played it? I'm more interested at this point of the way you just said Caribbean. How did I say it? <laughs> Caribbean. <laughs> You, say, you sound like me when I'm trying to say things in Japanese while I'm learning, where I break it down into like the syllables. Caribbean. <laughs> I mean, this is what is important. Is it Caribbean, Caribbean, or Caribbean? I find the third option quite good. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the natives say it, you know. I find it's best from where you're from. I'm from Port Royal, so we'll see. <laughs> oh, yes. My favourite James Bond film is Casino Royale. <laughs> It's amazing. Getting back to an earlier point. In a previous episode of this, when we first heard of this game, we said we don't know how to pronounce it. They say it both ways in the game. And Port Royal. Welcome you to Port Royal. The seat of the so Canary there's no question here. Like um, Caesar and Kaiser in um, Fallout New Vegas. Exactly. It's like, oh, there are two pronunciations. Fuck it. We'll throw them both in there. Everyone's <laughs> right and also wrong. <laughs> Just to confuse things. Well, I'm, Why not? Yeah. I'm going with Port Royal. Sounds more posh. Why not? In the cat rap BM. Right. About the game. <laughs> <laughs> About the game. <laughs> so, I don't know if you've played it, but I will briefly explain how the game works then. There's two campaigns. There's Trader and Adventurer. And I first chose Adventurer because I thought it'd be quicker and fun. And um, I quickly lost all my money and my ship went down in flames. <laughs> so then I did Trader. And that taught me a bit more about how the economics of the game works and I kind of got a better hold on it and was able to progress. So the game, I think the aim of it is to build up your business, create and invest in towns and stuff like that around the map, which is in the Caribbean. And uh, there's also, there's a storyline there, sort of, about a love interest with the Viceroy's daughter. Oh, okay. It's, I think it's, well, no, I think that's like, if you're not interested in just becoming, you know, zero to hero type business empire, Maybe you can just tell yourself, oh, the story is driving me forward and I'm all, it's just a way of impressing her and winning the girl. I haven't got very far with the games. So I don't know how big a part Elena plays in it. Or Elena, or Elena, or Lana, whoever her name is. Some Spanish girl. <laughs> 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 this game can be pronounced so many ways, I don't know. But yeah, if there's fun in this game, it's seeing yourself progress from a shipwrecked boy on his first boat working his way up to buying warehouses and businesses and trading uh, what do you trade salt and rum and whatever and um, you get money and you buy bigger boats and you get fleets and you set up trade routes and you become very wealthy and maybe kiss Eleanor at the end well that's what I was going to come on to I'm very partial to rum so how quickly can I obtain all of the rum and does it give me here in my actual real life any rum and can I have some <laughs> rum, please? I've not obtained any real rum as yet, but you'll be very happy that Port Royal, which is the starting point, they manufacture rum. Yay! So the first thing you have when you start the game is barrels of rum. Nice. Fantastic. <laughs> I'd never leave the port. <laughs> I'd, I'd just lose immediately. I've got some rum downstairs. I might go get it. <laughs> the immersive experience. When I first saw the game, I was reasonably excited for it purely because i thought it was a like a well, i knew it was trading but i thought you could actually build your own town is there any element of that in it because i don't think there is yes oh there is, there is. oh fantastic i haven't done it but certainly within the towns you visit to start off with there's lots of different buildings and they're mostly there just to give you a thing that you can do like you can go to the palace and you're given a task to go off and build up relations between you and the Spanish, or you and someone else, or whatever. Or save someone, or deliver this... Sh oh, there's a famine in the Cayman Islands or something, to go and give food to them or something. Um, and there's the taverns you can... There's like betting, but it's not really betting. It's like playing one round of blackjack, and you either win it or lose it. Okay. Um, <laughs> so betting. And can you place those <laughs> down wherever you want? Well, I haven't got that far. Uh, what I've heard is that you can build your own town. And you certainly there's an architect, so you can make the existing towns better. And according to what I've read, you can create your own. But I don't haven't done Ooh, it, so I've got no experience. Okay, that. I might actually be a bit more interested in this. Do you play as a specific 
nation or do you choose one or are you kind of your own being and you're trading with the various nations that you know you see an english flag there i see other flags i'm not good with flags I'm not a flag guy sorry <laughs> um <laughs> you start off as a guy who's in a shipwreck uh he gets found he gets back to i think port royal or somewhere he gets picked up and he does tell you a phrase from i can't remember where he's from you can name him and choose his gender as long as the gender is male I don't know why it has an option, but it does give you really? an option to choose, and there's only one option. That's weird. Uh, and the default name is Steve. Steve. But you can, you can yeah, <laughs> you can change that. <laughs> Steve, the man, uh, who is our heroic adventurer. He is, but it does tell you where he's from, so it does put him in a place in time, and because uh, the the reason he gets friendly with behind the ship, it's not really important, is because they're from the same town or something. Anyway, not important. Is it? all overhead shot or can you actually go like first person and walk about the town that you've made you cannot go first person it is all above you can zoom in and out you can get in quite close but it's always above i mean you go it goes slightly swooping down when you get very close to the towns because you jump between the buildings yeah but no you can never walk about you can see like cows walking around and stuff Okay. So when you click on one of the buildings there, it then brings up a, a text box or something? It's all text box. The whole game yeah. is text box. Right, yeah. okay. That's one of the things I didn't really like about it. It feels very much... It's, I think the game's 10 years old, but it feels like a much older game. Everything is like reading spreadsheets. It, it's just, yeah, look how much this costs. Can I trade it with this person? Yes, no. Press this. Everything seems to be going into several layers of a menu to get to the next thing. It just felt like a game I played about 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm sure that's the appeal. I'm sure that's the, the market, that f- filling that niche of people who want to play that kind of game. I agree. It's not necessarily for me, but, um, you know, I'm not going to be a judgy Jason about it. I'm not a judgy <laughs> Jason. What? I mean, your name's already there. <laughs> <laughs> me and my well, snap say- decisions on things. I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I would say I thought it was very slow to get going. I pretty much had to restart for my first playthrough just to sort of... Oh, I've had an idea of how it works. I'll go back to the beginning and start again fully fresh. Then it still takes a couple of hours to really get going. I've got to admit, once I started setting up trade routes, and it's pretty much doing the job for you. You've got automatic trading, and you've got like three different ships going around different routes doing all your trading for you. You can just see your money going up while you're concentrating on the missions and stuff. At that point, it starts to get a bit more enjoyable. But I would say I'd be surprised if a lot of people who aren't already into this sort of game would put in the investment to get to that point. It's a bit boring. (laughs) But Adam, you might like it. I was going to say, Adam, tell us about the time you went to Port Royal. (laughs) (laughs) I knew you were going to bring that up. Damn you. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so... We went on a cruise ship to the Caribbean, and um, <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely loved it. But I could have sworn I visited Port Royal. So when this came up and we was all organising it, as we do at Dinos, because we're very organised here at Dinos. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. It's a professional <laughs> organisation. Yeah, totally. I happened to mention that I'd been to Port Royal, having further researched um, my wife kindly told me that no it was actually Port Nelson which isn't too far away it's just like another island away it's actually in in Antigua whereas Port Royal is I believe Jamaica and the reason I thought it was Port Royal is because the tour guide was talking about the trade route funny enough talking about this game uh, between the Port Royal and Port Nelson so yeah my bad <laughs> Badam, you like things like Stardew Valley and stuff like that, don't you? Yeah, that's why I was quite excited for this. So you might like it. I don't know, but I, I kind of like the the building type simulators where you can build up your town. You can like uh, all the theme parks and stuff that you can do. And uh, no, like, I, I no love theme parks, that. I'm afraid. No, I know that, but it's, it's not Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> Those type of games um, where you build up your whatever it is and uh, then see it thrive um not 
sure how I'm going to get on with the whole text box reading in depth thing. Um, yeah, so because Stardew also gives you a, a little more, a little more agency, doesn't it? Because you've you've got your little character that you can walk around and yeah, yeah, this is interact it. You, with you, as well as this is you feel very, more part uh, of it. Static. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, th- I think fundamentally they're probably the same thing, and the feedback loop of I've you know I've achieved this, I can now do more stuff with that and uh, make it quicker for myself and that sort of thing. I think works probably exactly the same way, but I just think the presentation lets it down a bit, which is to be fair, it's over a decade old. So, is there any like cutscenes in it and stuff like that, or is it all yeah. literal? No, no, there's very nice cutscenes. I mean, they're not animated I mean they are animated but in the sense of they're still paintings that sort of move across the screen slowly and zoom in and out okay so yes that's the start that was what started getting me into it because after that first failure of the game <laughs> I then discovered this whole <laughs> love story bit and that drew me in for an extra maybe 10 minutes to keep going <laughs> it. but no but that was enough to then I was then starting to get hold of ah because I didn't understand the whole trade route thing to start with, and I was sort of going to each island in my own little ship, do right, this, do that, and then okay. I realised, oh, I can just start automatically set up my other ship to do that. Now I can afford another ship, that can go off and do that, and I'll just concentrate on other bits and pieces. <laughs> so I think it's worth it. It's a sort of game... I'm glad they put it in Games with Gold, this sort of thing, because it's the sort of thing that I would never pay for or go out and choose because it's out of my usual genre. And I like that sort of stuff, at least one of the games in Games with Gold, to be something I wouldn't actually choose myself but might yeah. give a go. And and in this case, I probably won't go back, but I'm glad I'll give it a go. Yeah, I, I might give it a go, see what it's like. If the building element in it is fairly in-depth, I'll probably quite enjoy it. But um, if it's very loosely, you know, like just place a building here, right, let's get on with the trade-in, I might switch off. But, uh, yeah, I'll definitely give the it a go. The impression I got is it's not that in-depth, but I didn't get that far with it, so I can't comment. <laughs> right. I should imagine a part of the idea for putting this on Games of Gold, just while we're talking about it, is um, Port Royale 4 was released last year in September. So um, ah. I imagine it's a little free publicity. Maybe it's maybe Port Royale's already on the Xbox. Maybe it's, it's coming there soon. Yeah, it looks like it's already out. So I imagine it's a little pre- free promotion for the latest version. Right, okay. Well, if you're a fan of uh, the Port Royale sagas um please do comment down below and uh tell us all about it i might have buried some pirate treasure somewhere i forget where but it might be under the subscribe button so give it a tap and you might find it <laughs> everyone say goodbye see ya i'm off to get some rum <laughs> <laughs>